Welcome to the Air Mirror Roundtable. My guest is Amy Meisner. So welcome, Amy. Nice to have you back. Yeah, great to be back. Thanks, Tom. And uh, before we get too far into this, our normal disclosure that Air Mirror is not a broker dealer or investment advisor. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. We don't know your situation. I have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Past performance is not indicative of future results, and hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented. However, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. So with that, uh, and of course, you can pause the video and go to the bottom of our web pages to read the full disclosure. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen, and uh, you should be able to share yours now. All right. Uh, let's uh, get this uh, started. Uh, thanks for joining. I know the um, uh, it's tough sometimes for people to join um, in, uh, you know, at the start of the market uh, uh, when while it's open. So... You know, nor normally uh, they, a lot of us get our trades done before that. So before yeah, that's meeting. true. That's true. I, I'm I'm good. So I have no just no uh, interruptions for me over here. So everything's good. But um, me too. Uh, but thanks for, for those who were able to join live. And uh, today um, I'm going to talk about um, uh, go over uh, Q3 since we just ended uh, Q3 for 2018. And uh, let's get started. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today are um, I have uh, three different strategies that I do uh, trade alerts for on the Aramir site and so what I'm going to talk about is um, uh, you know what happened with those three strategies in um, Q3 of 2018 so that's just the last uh, three months we just finished uh, the third quarter which ended uh, the end of September so that would be July, August and September um, and how everything performed and so forth um, so, uh, but first, uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the, the three different trade alert strategies that I do here. Um, then I'll talk about the uh, market environment during uh, the third quarter. And then I'll go into the performance of each strategy during the third quarter um, in my alert service. And then I'll step through um, the latest trades that were, uh, that ended up um, at the end of each, um, uh, the last trade of each uh, um, strategy as well for the quarter. So. Um, so let's just talk about uh, the three different trade strategies that I do here at Aramir. Uh, the first one is the Weird Ore. It's a monthly um, uh, trade that I do once a month. Um, it's also known as Asymmetrical Iron Condor. Uh, the second one is the 14-day trade, which is a short-term trade uh, that's just kind of based on the Weird Ore. I've actually changed it a little bit um, to be a much more simplified version. Um, and that is a short-term trade where I can have um, up to uh, four trades um, on uh, per month, so every week, but it's meant to be a very short-term trade. Uh, and then finally, the nested iron condor, which is one of my uh, favorite um, iron condor trades. So those are the three strategies that I do here. Um, go over each um, strategy, the uh, characteristics of each strategy for those that are not familiar uh, with them. Uh, the Weird Ore or the Asymmetrical Iron Condor is a market neutral strategy. It's relatively smooth um, with an easy adjustment um, style. Um, so it has that tends to have that smooth uh, T plus zero line that a lot of folks like. Uh, it's a high probability uh, trade, so it has, high, has a high probability of wins, 85% or higher statistically. Uh, it has a lower sensitivity to volatility than a conventional Condor. That's you know partially because that T plus zero line is uh, pretty flat, um, and the um, Vega is a little bit, it's short Vega, but not as short Vega as a conventional Condor would be. Um, it has a minimal upside risk, and uh, depending on how it's managed on the upside, which is what happens most of the time in the markets, the markets tend to move up more often than down, um, uh, this trade was designed to minimize that upside risk, and um, can also have uh, no upside risk if uh, managed uh, if managed in a certain way or where you're just removing uh, the upside risk as the market goes up. So it can be uh, dealt with to not have any upside risk at all. Um, and uh, fi finally on this slide, the downside risk um, is pretty easy to manage uh, just by using some simple uh, debit spreads. Uh, another 
few things that I really love about this trade uh, are the efficient use of margin. This is just really a uh, really nice thing to have with a strategy because um, what I mean by that is um, I know what my margin is going to be um, at the beginning of the trade and it basically stays the same throughout regardless of how many adjustments I do um, or if there's no adjustments or whatever obviously there wouldn't be a change but no, regardless of how many adjustments I do the margin is basically going to stay the same so it really lets uh, lets me plan how much I want to associate with this particular strategy and not have to worry about um, leaving a bunch of uh, margin on the table that's not being used or not having uh, mar enough margin for another strategy I might be doing. Uh, the days in the trade uh, average around 30 days or less uh, which is nice so I, I put this on every month and every monthly cycle um, every monthly expiration cycle and because it is generally 30 days or less there's no need to overlap the trade so um, I just have one on and then by the time that one's removed I'm then waiting to put on a new trade so also helps with the uh, planning for how much margin I'm going to use for this strategy. Um, and in addition it's also really easily scalable so uh, this particular trade is done um, with a certain number of contracts in proportion to each other it's a, a complex strategy with uh, multiple uh, pieces um, but it's uh, easily scalable so a one tranche version of the weird or which is what I do in the trade alert service can easily be scaled up uh, to a, for a larger account. So that's the the uh, weird or. Uh, now let's talk about the 14 day trade. Um, this trade is a market neutral strategy as well and it's based on a real simplified version of the weird or. Um, so um, originally I created this trade as just a shorter shorter term version uh, with some different adjustment style um, that was basically looked exactly like the weirdo was made up the same pieces um, and then what I realized with the trade alert service was that because it's got such a short time frame and um, a lot of uh, doesn't have a lot of time to make up for any adjustments I really wanted uh, to simplify this version so that there weren't so many um, trade alerts going out in a short amount of time if there were lots of adjustments and also so that um, the, the trade itself had more room for both up and downside moves before having to make an adjustment so because every time an adjustment is made it takes profitability out of the trade so I wanted to give it more room so I actually created a much simpler version of the weird or uh, but just suited for this much shorter time frame um, this also has a high probability of wins uh, a very simple risk management uh, style of adjusting um, allows for more trade opportunities per month um, which of course gives a potential for greater returns so um, I can have up to you know anywhere from two to four uh, trades per month um, with this uh, particular strategy because they, they are done in the weeklies or the quarterlies or the monthly cycles but I can be put one on every week if I if I find a good opportunity um, and then of course um, the greater profit potential by doing this, by having more trades, it's also achievable without the need for additional capital. And what I mean by that is that um, I don't have to overlap them if I don't want to. I could still have multiple trades um, and try to make additional potential profit throughout the month uh, without overlapping either because I'm doing one maybe every other week um, if I find a good trading opportunity or if I find a good trading opportunity every week that perhaps the, the week before um, the trade has already been closed um, closed out because it was already uh, met its profit target in a really short time so uh, so that's a nice feature as well <clears throat> so that's the uh, 14 day trade and then uh, finally the nested iron condor it's one of my um, favorite standbys it's uh, I've been trading this for many many years it's an improvement on the classic iron condor and um, also has a very simple adjustment style uh, again it's a high probability trade and it's given me consistent returns um, year after year for, for many years now um, it's very systematic and objective uh, has a very uh, rules-based risk management plan so there's a lot less time um, comparing any possible discretionary trades uh, with a lot of other strategies you don't need to do that with this it just has a very uh, simple rules-based um, and systematic uh, plan 
uh, that um, is easily to, easy to follow. Um, I'm also very proactive uh, with my um, adjustments. So uh, being a, an iron condor, um, it doesn't have that real smooth T plus zero line. You don't have a lot of room, uh, wiggle room, even though I might be far out in the wings before um, the uh, you know the T plus zero line starts to to trend down. Um, kind of like that upside down smile. So I like to be very proactive with my adjustments so that it doesn't get too much in trouble before an adjustment is made. And, um, and I'm also very incremental with what I do with adjustments. So uh, this really helps uh, allow the strategy to adapt to any changing market conditions and it also helps to avoid any over adjusting during choppy markets. So uh, one of the things you might notice with these three different strategies that I do here um, is that they very have a lot of similarities as far as um, what uh, the, the basics of those strategies and that has to do with you know the style of trading that I like to do so they're all market neutral I don't want to guess market direction these are not um, supposed to be put on as a uh, speculative trade where I'm guessing which market which direction the market's going to go so these are all based on a market neutral strategies um, they're all high probability trades so they all have a pretty high probability of wins and um, they all have a very simple uh, risk management or adjustment style because I like to keep things really simple. Um, so usually I'm just using uh, spreads or just a single strike uh, to make my adjustments. Um, <clears throat> let's also talk about uh, the planned capital and some other uh, information about each one of these um, strategies. Uh, so for the 14 day trade that uses the least amount of capital uh, the planned capital for each trade there is 12,500. That's because I do a five uh, lot uh, uh, trade. Of course, that could be less if I'm doing you know, less contracts. It's going to be uh, less um, planned capital. Um, but um, I'm using uh, a five lot, so that's about a $12,500 planned capital. Usually the trades start off at around nine or $10,000 in the trade, and then it can go up to about 12,500 at the most. Uh, the average, you know, the days in the trade, um, I don't want to be in it uh, more than 14 days. Sometimes it's a little bit over, a lot of times it's a lot less, um, hence the name, the 14-day trade. So I try to keep these, um, you know, within two weeks um, in and out. Um, and because of this, um, the nature of this trade being put on on the weeklies or every week, so it could be a weekly cycle or a quarterly cycle or a monthly cycle, just, you know, if there's a good opportunity, I always have um, an opportunity to come up every week. Um, there's the chance to have up to four trades uh, per month, uh, which of course allows um, for some additional profits to be made. And because of the short-term nature of this trade, there even if there, I had one on every week, there wouldn't be more than two overlapping. So that helps with margin as well. Um, and uh, let's now go to the uh, Weird Or, the monthly version. Uh, the planned capital for a single tranche or a single unit uh, weirdo, which is what I trade in the alerts, is $20,000. And since I only have one on at a time, uh, that is also the account size. Uh, the days in the trade are usually 30 days or less, um, so they're never overlapping. Uh, so I've only got one on every expiration month, and they, there's no need to overlap them. Um, <clears throat> then the nested iron condor. <clears throat> now this has a higher planned capital. But it starts off much, much lower. So it might start off with like uh, fifteen to you know eighteen thousand dollars worth of plan capital or less, or excuse me, margin or less. Uh, but I like to keep <clears throat> enough margin uh, set aside in case there's any uh, like the maximum amount of adjustments that I'm going to do, uh, which would not bring me over fifty thousand. So I always have a plan capital of fifty thousand uh, dollars for each trade, even though most of the time it uses a lot less. Um, the days in the trade for this are um, it's a long, little bit longer term trade, but most of the time I'm able to get out with a decent profit within 30 days. Uh, but some, but it, it can go longer, um, you know, somewhere between 30 and 60 days. But most of the time it's 30 days or less, as well. And I like to have uh, one trade per monthly cycle. Uh, but because of uh, this might go a little bit uh, further than 30 days, there's a possibility of having two trades overlap. Uh, but usually um, when I do that, I'm not um, having any trouble with uh, um, an account size of $50,000 where even though each each trade has a planned capital of $50,000, I'm not using 
uh, that much for both of the trades. Um, so there's usually no problem overlapping those if I need to for, for a week or two. So. <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, the market conditions during the uh, third quarter of 2018, which is, uh, again, July through September. Um, I trade the Russell 2000, so I'm going to be talking about um, uh, the average true range here that I'm talking about is for the Russell 2000. Uh, so um, the average true range during that time was uh, 13 to 19 points, and the Russell 2000 is trading at around um, 17, you know, over 1,700. So it's trading between 16, 1,600, in the, within the 1,600s to the 1,700s during that time. Um, so that's, you know, a pretty good move. That's about a three-quarter percent to a one percent move on a daily basis. So that's pretty decent, and it's been doing that quite a bit. Um, so you'd think the volatility would be a little bit higher, but uh, the volatility has actually been in a lower range um, for the for the rut, regardless of the um, the daily moves that have been happening, um, and part of that is because um, there's lots of good stuff going on. The markets have been hitting all time highs. We've got good earnings. We've got good economic numbers. Uh, there's still plenty of uh, buybacks going on, so it's keeping kind of a floor in the market for any kind of dips that we have. Uh, of course, there are some negative uh, things out there that are that can cause some problems and some choppiness in the market, which has been happening. Uh, the trade wars, of course, being uh, one of the big uh, news items that uh, you guys have all been hearing about, mostly China and Mexico and Canada, but also with the EU. Uh, so, of course, now we've got uh, Mexico and Canada on board with a new agreement. Um, so it's not finalized or anything, and, and uh, but it's that's a lo uh, definitely um, you know put some uh, uh, wind back in the market and, and, and brought brought us back up a little bit uh, for most of the markets. The rut still has been kind of uh, lagging. Uh, lately, um, but uh, those things um, tend to move the markets a little bit. Of course, with the rut, it's a um, you know it's more domestic stocks, so these types of things don't affect um, the rut as much. Um, so that's uh, a good thing. Uh, but you know, uh, if there's a lot of tariffs out there that are going to be passed on um, to uh, you know to our goods, that's going to affect. It, it still will affect the, the, our domestic markets as well, our domestic uh, companies as well. So it still has um, uh, some impact on the rut. So um, also, what's uh, uh, the Fed has been uh, raising rates, which is um, also affecting um, markets and market outlooks for the future. Um, certainly more hawkish. It's it's not you know rates are still pretty low right now, but. Uh, the Fed stance is getting more and more hawkish as inflation starts to rise, so that's also uh, something to watch out for, and it's been kind of watched over this last uh, quarter as well. And then, of course, uh, all the shenanigans uh, going on in Washington, which is, seems to be just a regular thing, that seems to be um, almost pretty much ignored by um, investors of, of these days. Uh, there's, there's just so much coming out that uh, it's just being ignored. Uh, but, you know, if there is something that's, you know, really... Um, uh, you know, some type of devastating news or uh, people in the markets feel like it's uh, really going to cause uh, some problems in the stock market, that could also make it move, or vice versa. <clears throat> so uh, let me uh, go and take a look at uh, the charts for the RUT. Um, so this right here is a uh, just a daily chart for the Russell 2000, uh, which is what I do all of my uh, trade alerts in. And as you can see here, this is uh, from July, which is about right here, uh, to uh, September. This area right here is uh, what I'm talking about for the third quarter. And, you know, it looks pretty choppy. Um, but if you look a little deeper, you'll see that um, uh, these uh, candles are pretty big. Um, like just for instance here, you know, you've got... Uh, you know, a little over a 20-point move here on this day. So most of these candles are, you know, anywhere from, you know, there's some small ones, but, but a lot of them on a regular basis have been, uh, again, three-quarters to one percent or more uh, on a daily moves each day. But we've been kind of floating around uh, between um, above and below the 20-day moving average and hitting the 50-day moving average and kind of bouncing around uh, the 20 and 50-day moving averages for a while. Um, and then uh, just recently, over the last uh, month, we've been kind of, the Russell 2000 has been coming off 
um, and letting uh, some of the other markets leave instead. After hitting an all-time new high, we've been coming off and uh, dropped below the 20-day moving average, and now below the 50-day moving average, and then below the 100-day moving average. So uh, just in the last few days. So um, so we'll see what uh, what we have in store for uh, the Russell 2000 coming up. But it certainly has been uh, moving around quite a bit lately. Um, the average true range again, as I mentioned, was you know in the highs in the you know the 19, 20 point area, and on the lows about 13, 14 point area uh, during this time. Uh, still pretty decent moves on a daily basis. Uh, let's take a look at the RVX, which is uh, the VIX. Uh, it's like the VIX is to the SPX. The RVX is the uh, volatility um, uh, measurement of the Russell 2000. So. Um, during this time, as you can see, we've been we had some spikes earlier. Obviously, in February we had that big move down, um, but um, and a little bit in March. But you know, really much have just been kind of trending really low, and has been on the the low range um, for most of this quarter, which has been a little bit challenging because it's tough to to you know get enough premium sometimes. You know, anytime you're a theta trader, you want to get as much premium as possible, and you want to get it as far out in the wings as possible, as far away from the money as possible. It's been a little bit difficult because of the uh, lower volatility, um, but um, and e you know even though this volatility has kind of been in this lower range of about uh, you know this one spike up here to 19, which is not really that high, uh, but kind of hanging out in the 14, 13, 14 range. Um, the uh, the RET itself has had some you know pretty big daily moves. These candles are, are pretty decent size for a daily move, a pretty decent range, uh, but. Um, so obviously that becomes a little challenging, but uh, these trades are, uh, these strategies are, um, the risk management style of these strategies are meant to be able to handle those types of moves, so it hasn't been an issue. Um, so let's take a look at how uh, the trades did for the quarter, and then I'll show you some. So start with um, the weird or So this is, uh, again, uh, this is just from... Uh, Trades that closed um, in July through September. So there might have, uh, there might have been a trade that opened up in June, but any trade that closed um, during uh, the third quarter is what I'm um, going through here. So the weird or the monthly trade. There were four trades that closed in the third quarter, uh, four wins and zero losses. So uh, you know looking pretty good uh, for Q3. Uh, same thing with the 14-day trade. There were seven trades uh, during the quarter that. Um, that closed during the quarter. Uh, again, seven wins, zero losses. And the Nestor Condor also had four trades that uh, closed during uh, the third quarter with four wins and zero losses. So, uh, perfect score for Q3. Uh, that's what we like to see. Doesn't always happen, but um, we'll see what uh, what we have in store for Q4. But again, these are all high probability trades. So, you know, 80% or more of the time, these are going to be uh, winning trades. So. It's uh, the risk management that is in the important piece uh, to keep them in line and, and keep the uh, losses as small as possible. So let's go dive deep, a little bit deeper into each strategy. Um, this is the weird or so uh, for those four trades that I talked about. Um, here's a here's a breakdown. Um, the, uh, we had a trade on from six eight to seven twenty. It was closed on seven twenty. Uh, this one was on a little bit longer than normal. It could have been um, closed earlier, uh, but I um, left it on a little bit longer. It was 42 days. Uh, I had five adjustments, but the last two adjustments were really more like minor tweaks. They weren't really necessary adjustments. So um, normally when I talk about an adjustment, I mean uh, something where a trigger, a, a, a downside trigger gets hit or an upside trigger gets hit where I want to keep the trade out of trouble. Uh, this trade um, did have three of those, and then um, this, the last two were more just minor adjustments, just to keep the profitability in the trade. As the, uh, I think in this case, uh, we were coming out of a V-shaped, we were coming up in a V-shaped um, uh, recovery at the time. So if I look at that, I believe that was around, you know, right here, where we had gone down quite a bit, and then we had this V-shaped recovery. So kind of got knocked around a little bit uh, during that time, but still managed to make a profit. Uh, this column right here is for the percentage of gain based on the max risk or the max margin that was used, which was 0.85%. Uh, 
and then this column is for the percentage of gain uh, based on the planned capital, or in this case, uh, the account size is both the same as the planned capital and the account size. As you can see, they're pretty close, and that's because uh, the margin uh, being used pretty much stays the same throughout, so I can utilize uh, the money that I have in the account uh, pretty efficiently. Um, the next trade uh, for the weirder was the uh, trade started on 712, uh, closed on 727. I was only in it for 15 days and I did not need any adjustments. Um, this one made about 3.22% on margin or 2.73% of planned capital. Uh, then we had the uh, uh, trade started on 810 to 911, 32 days in the trade. There were three adjustments on this trade. Uh, it made 1% on margin or uh, and almost 1%, 0.90% on planned capital. And then finally, uh, September 6th through September 26th, a 20-day trade uh, with one adjustment, made 3.03% on margin or 2.58% on planned capital. So for the, the quarter, total profit for the quarter was 7.1% on the planned capital amount, which was also the account size. So not bad for, for the uh, Q3. And then I put down some averages here. Uh, 27 days in the trade as he has been the average for this quarter, 2.5 adjustments were the average, um, and then um, the percentages, uh, these are the average percentages for each month as well. So let's take a look at the 14-day uh, trade for Q3. Uh, this one had seven trades. And as you can see here, um, not a lot of adjustments because this trade you know, I'm looking for really good opportunities to get in uh, when it's just right, um, and usually there's not a lot of adjustments. So usually, usually these are just in and out. Um, so, uh, as you can see here, the the longest one was in, in for 21 days, and that was probably because I didn't need any margin, and I was trying to pull out a little more theta on that one. Uh, but for the most part, they're they're under 14 days, 12, 6, uh, 4 you know, uh, five days here, nine days here, um, just a couple of them over 14 days here, but um, the average uh, being 10.5 days in the trade. Uh, the ad average adjustments are 0.5, so as you can see here, not a lot of adjusting going on during this time, even though it was quite choppy. Um, and then uh, the gains um, are going to uh, be pretty similar. I'm not using a lot of, uh, the margin here is also pretty efficient. I'm using a little bit less margin most of the time than uh, the planned capital of 12,500, so I'm usually using about uh, 9, maybe 10 at the most of that 12,500, but sometimes I um, get uh, closer to that. But um, if we add up all of the um, uh, gains for the quarter Q3, um, it's a 16.6% uh, of the planned capital amount of 12,500, so another good quarter for that trade. And then let's finally let's look at the nested iron condor results. Uh, again, four trades for that during Q3. Um, the average days in the trade, 27. So even though this trade um, is a long, uh, you know, put on with uh, more days to exit, uh, more days to expiration, uh, a lot of times the profit comes in pretty quick. Um, and this particular trade uh, had um, uh, four adjustments, then this one zero. Uh, so a couple of trades where we had uh, both of these, I believe, were both uh, some downside adjustments and some upside adjustments because we had that kind of choppy market. Um, so you know we had that you know here coming down, make some adjustments here going back up, um, you know something like that, depending on exactly where where it was entered. And then you know same thing here, we had a long move up, so um, this probably would have triggered some upside adjustments over here. So, uh, But choppiness is actually pretty good for this particular strategy. I can um, adjust one side and close the other and then if it chops back in the other direction I can then close out the, the originally adjusted side. So um, these worked out really well. And as you can see here, uh, this one where I'm not using a lot of margin uh, to start off these trades, so you can see the difference between the, the plan cap, the percentage of um, profit on planned capital is going to be a lot smaller than the percentage of uh, profit on plan, um, margin, especially if I don't have any adjustments because I'm not using that extra margin that I have set aside. 
Uh, but even with that, the planned capital of uh, $50,000 um, this quarter was up 7.93% uh, profit for the, uh, the account size. So, so those are the um, results of the three strategies. Um, so now I'm going to just go through and kind of step through um, the last trades for each uh, strategy for this quarter. Um, and I'll just go into um, Option Net Explorer and, and uh, go through them here. So start off with the uh, Weird Ore. Uh, this is the October expiration trade. It was started on the 6th of September. And the uh, rut was around 17.25 at the time. So you can see here, this is uh, the trade. If I go to um, my target exit date, I'm looking, you know, to make a pretty decent amount of money, especially if, if there aren't any adjustments. There's usually some adjustments in these, uh, but sometimes there aren't. So let's uh, move forward. Uh, let's go forward a day. So I, I do recall that the next day we did have uh, a down move early in the morning that triggered an adjustment, and that just kind of flattens out this T plus zero line. Uh, but it doesn't hurt the trade. It still allows me to, you know, have a decent amount of profitability um, built into the trade um, as time goes by. Um, so let's go to uh, actually the 11th. Skip ahead a little bit here. So here we are five days um, into the trade. And uh, it's just, you know, sitting here uh, pretty much just break even at this point. Still have plenty of time before the target exit date and plenty of profit that um, can be made. Uh, let's skip ahead again, just a few days, go to the 14th. Now some theta starting to come in. We're getting about, up about 1.6%. Um, this is a single tranche, so it's up about $298 at this point. Uh, let's skip ahead to... Uh, the following week, let's go a few more days here. This is uh, 14 days in the trade, so here we're only in two weeks, it's up 2.2%. I have one adjustment that I made earlier on in the trade, that was it. So, um, it's still collecting theta. And um, uh, oops, let's go ahead to. The day before closing, um, still have you know some time to go. This trade could stay on a little bit longer, um, but you know sometimes when it reaches a certain amount and the market looks like you know there might be something going on in the market, we've had a lot of you know news that could move the market around. Uh, sometimes I like to take these off earlier. So um, on the uh, following day. Um, I went ahead and decided to just remove this for a nice decent profit over 3%. So, um, but again, this trade could have been kept on for a little bit longer and try to squeeze out a little bit more. Just uh, got to be careful of um, any uh, necessary adjustments, especially want to ma maintain that profit that's already built into the trade and, and don't want to lose that. So, so that's uh, that was the last trade of the quarter for uh, the Weird Ore. So that did really well. So let's take a look at the 14-day trade. Uh, I'm going to go to the beginning of that. So this was the uh, beginning of the trade. Um, this is, again, this is a very simplified version uh, the weird or sometimes I'll put on a, a call credit spread as well um, depending on what the market's doing but um, I haven't been doing that with the uh, trend of the market being up at this point uh, for a while but by doing that it, it kind of resembles more of the weird or style trade but as you can see here it's it definitely has a flat T plus zero line where it's at and it's got a lot more room um, to the up and down side uh, before adjustments are needed, which I thought was important for such a short-term trade, so that there wasn't, a, you know, too much 
um, adjusting going on uh, when I only got such a short time to be in the trade and a uh, short time to build up build up that theta. Um, and also to try to, you know, certainly much more simple as well, especially if there's going to be multiple trades on per month. Um, so let's just uh, skip ahead a couple days. A couple days in the trade. Uh, made a small adjustment just to bring in some more profitability. Um, it's you know, already up 1.9%. Let's skip ahead again. Go another week. And again, theta is starting to build up here. Now it's up about 2.7%. Um, and I'm only in the trade for eight days. Um, time to start thinking about uh, closing this trade. So, following day, um, up about 2.7%. Again, it's still, you know, certainly safe to keep on for another week. Try to bring in some more money, um, or just take it off and uh, collect a, a decent amount of money without having to worry about it. So I'm trying to keep these a little hassle-free and not worry about any movement. And of course, in this particular case, I was a little concerned about the rut starting to um, fall off a little bit. You know, looked strong at the beginning of the day, then it would really come off. It uh, looked like maybe there was some rotation going on. Um, and sure enough, this week we, we did fall off uh, quite a bit. I think we you know, got all the way down to... Uh, 1660. I mean, still the trade would have been fine, but um, you didn't want to have to deal with any adjustments, and a big down move uh, would have caused me to um, enter some adjustments at that point. So, um, by taking these off pretty early when there's a nice profit, it just kind of keeps me from having to do a lot of um, work. And this is supposed to be a very minimal work trade. So, that was the uh, last. Um, 14-day trade in this in the quarterly cycle. Uh, let's take a look now at the nested iron condor. So that started. Oh, whoops! I'll go to the November trade. Um, so as you can see here, this is does not have, you know, the style of a condor is not going to have that super smooth, flat uh, T plus zero line. It's going to definitely be a little more, um, more like a hill on each side. So I, I like to be pretty proactive with these. I also like to keep the um, the risk pretty decent you know, distance away uh, from the market. Um, so you know, almost two standard deviations on the downside, one and a third to one and a half standard deviations on the upside. Um, so this, this trade was started at what was about 17.25 on the 6th. Let's kind of move forward to uh, go a few days, let's say, let's go a week to the 13th. And uh, there were no adjustments that needed to be made. Now this, you know, you've got some pretty decent room before an adjustment needs to be made on this. Even though the T plus zero line is not flat, uh, I still, my, with my rules, I, I do, um, most of the time, there's a pretty decent amount of room before an adjustment needs to be made. Of course, that's more helpful when the volatility is higher when you get in on these, but it um, uh, still has a pretty decent amount of room. So here on the 13th, already up 3.3 percent. I've only been in the trade for seven days, um, so that's not not a bad um, uh, to start off with. And as I mentioned, even though the planned capital is 50,000, uh, the margin's only 16,000 getting into these, you know, somewhere between 15 and 17,000, something like that. Of course, that could be made smaller by doing less. Uh, amount of contracts. I, I use three lots for each uh, credit spread, um, but if I were to make that uh, you know, two lots or one lot, uh, that would of course lower the um, margin and also if I made it uh, less width instead of a you know 30 point spread, maybe a 20 point spread. So there's different ways to look, uh, lower that margin as well and still have um, the uh, still run the trade based on the rules. So uh, the 19th, let's go to the 19th. It's the next week. It's Wednesday, following week. Um, again, no adjustments had to be made up to this point, 4.8%. Uh, 
at this point. And then finally, um, let's go uh, close this trade out on the 25th. 19 days in the trade. Um, it's up 5.5%. No need to stay in the trade and, and mess with it, although, of course, I could stay longer. There's still plenty of days to expiration um, in this cycle. But, uh, you know, it's a pretty decent amount of profit in a short amount of time. So, again, that's my personal preference is to take these off when there's a good amount of profit in a short amount of time and not have to deal with any additional market movement. So that's, uh, those are the three um, trades, the three strategies, the last trade of the quarter for each of those three strategies and how they did. Um, and uh, I do want to talk about uh, some new uh, pricing options uh, that we added, uh, that Tom added in um, for these trade alerts. So uh, to sign up for any of these trade alert services, you just go to Aramir dot com forward slash Amy and that takes you straight to the uh, the sign up page but let's take a look at um, that page um, it shows here uh, obviously some more information about each strategy uh, more information about me and um, what you get in the service and so forth some FAQs that are answered um, so what we did here was made a couple little changes one of the things I noticed was that I really like to make sure that I have a good opportunity, uh, a good entry for a 14-day trade. So there's not always going to be one every single week. Sometimes I look at the prices and I just don't like what I see, so I don't enter a trade. Um, so that means that I'm not going to have one on every week. You're not going to get, you know, sometimes you will, but um, sometimes you're not going to get four trades every month. Um, sometimes you're just going to get two or maybe even one, depending on if there's, you know, uh, not a lot going on. Um, with the weird or I always have one on every month. So what I thought I'd do is just uh, combine that. So I, I pretty much usually have at least two of these 14 days on every month and then the weird or you have one um, every month as well. So instead of having these as two separate um, uh, prices to, to you know purchase both of those uh, to just bundle them up uh, for $129 instead of $119 each it's $129. So that's you know really reasonable, um, an extra 10 bucks and you get both. Um, the nested iron condor is still the same at 119 per month. And then of course, if you want all three trade alerts, just it's an extra 20 bucks, 149. So, um, so that's the, the, the changes. These two are now bundled together. They'll have separate class pages like they do now, uh, but you can uh, get both of them. So that way you're getting, um, you know, at least two to three trades per month, uh, from that, uh, service and pick and choose which ones you want to follow. Uh, then the other thing we did was we added a quarterly and a six month option uh, just to, for some additional savings. So uh, for the quarterly, it's a 8% savings uh, and a six month um, is a 12% savings. So for those that want to save some extra money, that's a great way to go. Um, and of course, if you do the monthly um, option, uh, the first month is 50% off. So um, you can get in with just 50% uh, 50 50 of these prices for one month. Um, and then after that, it goes to these monthly prices. Or if you want to save uh, some money, uh, you can do the, the quarterly or six month and just pay ahead of time. So that's uh, kind of what uh, Tom added there for me. And uh, again, that's at uh, aramir.com forward slash Amy. All right. Well, thanks, Amy. Thanks, everyone. I uh, won't take everybody's time or everybody's busy. So uh, we will see you all next time. And, uh, you know, check out the recordings and other trading group meetings. And uh, happy to have you here. So thanks again. Thanks, Amy. And I'll Thank see everybody later. You.